Okay, follow me now. This way. And then just about three hours after waking up, the crew departed the Cosmonaut Hotel. You can see six flight suits there, so the prime crew in front, the backup crew behind them. That's NASA astronaut Anne McLean, Russian cosmonaut Anton Shkaplerov, and another Russian cosmonaut Oleg Artemyev. The backup crew stays in quarantine with the prime crew throughout their stay uh, in the Cosmonaut Hotel and their final uh, time in Russia beforehand. And they're with them as they go through their final suit up and rides out to the pad. Again, another time-honored tradition of flying aboard the Soyuz, the Russian Orthodox priest blessing the crew as they make their way out of the hotel and get ready to board a bus and head over to get their suits on. That's enough, enough water. And so after a quick shower, they wave farewell to those that are gathered at the hotel, pose for a few final photos and then board the bus. The small blue knob you can see right at the top part of the chest is used to adjust the pressure once they go through uh, the inflation or the pressurization of the suit itself. And after they get suited up, and we'll see it in just a moment, uh, each of the crew members goes and gets a quick uh, pressure check or a leak check on these suits. And so we'll be able to see them uh, inflate a bit. But Again, for, for Mark Van de Heij, this is the second time he's done this exact same process. Again, so after they get the suits on, they move over to get a pressure check, just again, to make sure that the suit is free from leaks. They each get into basically a mock-up of a Soyuz seat. So what you're looking at is what it looks like once they're inside the capsule itself. And again, so they were able to talk to a number of folks uh, inside after confirming their suits were leak-free, uh, speaking with uh, Sergei Korsakov, a cosmonaut who was assigned to the flight up until the swap for Mark Van de Heij. Also speaking to uh, Dmitry Rogozin and Sergei Krikalov from Roscosmos and Ken Bowersox and Joel Montalbano of NASA. And launch pad 31 a little bit further away than Gagarin's start where uh, for years, crews have launched uh, from Baikonur to the International Space Station. It took them about 70 minutes uh, to get over to the pad. Crew members being helped uh, again in those Sokol launch and entry suits to make their way to the rocket, head up the elevator for their ride to space. Once at the pad, the crew climbing a small flight of stairs, getting set up, taking a few final photos and waving goodbye uh, to officials from Roscosmos and NASA gathered to see the crew members off before they head into the elevator, the ride up to the top of the Soyuz rocket to board their capsule. This all took place about two hours ago, and since then the crew has been uh, in their seats uh, again, Oleg Novitsky is in the center seat. He's the commander of the Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, Pyotr Dubrov in the left seat, Mark Van de Heij in the right. Since they've been on board, they've gone through a number of pre-launch checks, uh, confirming a uh, good leak check on the Soyuz capsule itself, also doing leak checks on their suits, continuing to speak uh, with the pad engineers and the launch teams down in Baikonur as they continue to count down towards launch. And right at 35 seconds, the first umbilical tower separating the vehicle on internal power. We'll have auto sequence start. 
So the ground propellant feed to the rocket has now completely terminated. Auto sequence initiated. Second umbilical separated 15 seconds from launch. Launch command for ignition. Second umbilical tower separate. And we see booster ignition. Engines at maximum thrust. And liftoff. Soyuz MS-18 on its way to the International Space Station. Ten seconds. The booster parameters are nominal. Everything is good on board. Hearing nominal performance, the first stage delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from those four first stage boosters and the single core engine. 30 seconds into the flight, the uh, parameters of the booster are nominal. Everything is fine on board. 40 seconds, uh, the vehicle is stable. Everything is good on board. Continuing to hear good performance calls, a quick look inside the capsule. You can see uh, the crew strapped in and monitoring displays as they continue on their way uphill. Just past the one minute mark into flight. Your and roll are nominal. Okay, if you received the, the message about the casual parameters, copy. And right on time, we see first stage separation, the Koryov cross, those four strap-on boosters separating. Now the single core stage continuing to power the Soyuz spacecraft into flight. Second stage separation is confirmed. We had better two. And so we heard good confirmation. Second stage is shut down and separated. You saw a piece fly off there. That was the lower skirt of the third stage that was jettisoned right on time as it was supposed to. Uh, orbit insertion is confirmed. Uh, our congratulations, and now uh, Moscow MCC Moscow will talk to you. Kazbeki Moscow. And we can see the docking port coming into view just to the left and a little bit down from the crosshairs, the docking port uh, on the Rosviet module. Um, down to the right is the service module of the Cygnus spacecraft. You can tell by the two large uh, circular solar arrays to either side docked to node one. So it'll be just next door to this Soyuz spacecraft. The range rate is minus 0.4, and the uh, crosshairs are aligned. Copy. Range rate uh, 0.34, uh, and uh, the uh, target is in the center of the screen. And uh, the uh, angle of the docking port is in line uh, with the uh, Range estimation. Range 53, closing uh, rate is 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Mark, Mark, could you please start the stopwatch? Copy. Uh, target is in the center, crosshair is aligned. There is a small misalignment. And we will stand by for contact and docking. Side copy. 
ranges three. The docking target is in the center. The cross hairs are, hairs are aligned. Standing by for contact. Contact confirmed that 140506, mechanical link established. Uh, Contact and capture coming at 6.05 a.m. Central, 11.05 GMT. While stationed in Soyuz, flew 262 statute miles over northern China. And there we see hatch open. Hatch coming open at 8.20 a.m. Central Time, 13.20 GMT. The station flying 270 statute miles over the South Pacific. Oleg Novitsky first through the door, the Soyuz commander, making his third trip to the International Space Station. Just behind him, the newcomer, the rookie amongst them, Pyotr Dubrov, making his first flight into space. And then last but certainly not least, we'll get it there. We see Mark Van de High making his second flight, his second long duration stay on board the International Space Station. And then with that, all three crew members through the hatch, all three crew members now on board the station, Expedition 64 and 10 people strong. Moscow Station, Space to Ground One. So, we can conclude the conference and thank you. It went very well and all the best to you.